The biggest names in the game convened in Barcelona to play in this, the most respected of tours. Barcelona is probably my favorite stop on the EPT. I really love uh, Barcelona. I think it's like my sixth time here. The location is really amazing. That's one of the things that drive me more crazy about this city. All hungry to win the title where it all began. Six foot to blood, how can I laugh? Oh, no. I never think I have it. You weren't afraid of anything. You really don't believe me, eh? It's too good. Too good for TV. But only one can walk away champion. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to EPT Barcelona. PokerStars.com EPT is on the road again. It's time for leg five, and guess what? We're back where it all started six seasons ago. Casino Barcelona hosted the very first EPT event back in 2004, and now it welcomes us again for what is set to be another sellout event. Always a favourite, players from all over the world have come to the Catalan capital for a bit of Mediterranean sun and of course the chance to become the next European champion. Day one did not disappoint, setting a new record with 758 entries. The floor was packed with superstars from all over the globe, full of admiration for this superb Spanish city. EPT Barcelona, without question, my absolute favorite EPT of all of them. Definitely some of the best poker action in one of the most beautiful cities, so it's definitely one of my favorite stops. Uh, it's been one year I've been waiting to uh, hit more of this uh, Iberico ham, so I'm really, really pumped up for that. For Arno, it was the taste of ham, but for the 399 remaining, it's the taste of victory, as those who survive day two will be in the money and one step closer to glory. It's Southern Europe. EPT events seem to go rather well for me, so he's, he's hoping. I'm excited to be here, it's a big tournament, and um, I've obviously got quite a good record in EPT so far, so I feel like, you know, just win a few flips and this one's in the bag. Uh, I always expect to win, but you know, in poker you never know what's going to happen. Monosort, Los Cubes, Fuera en Empezar, Shuffle Up, Andy. Elki had a great day one and is taking those chips over to the feature table, where play is just about to get started. Mr. Cropelier is taking more than 88,000 chips with him as he tries to make history here and become the first ever two-time EPT victor. I really love uh, Barcelona. I think it's like my sixth time here. It's my biggest goal these days is a uh, second EPT title. But he isn't the only one trying to two-peat. 2005 Copenhagen winner Noah Boken is sitting at the table alongside him. For me, to be the first one to win a second EPT title would be crazy. I mean, I know how tough it is, so I know it's kind of impossible, but we all try. Out in the field, though, many other previous champions will be racing them to it. Including this man who could become the greatest story. Parisian Jan Boobly won this event back in season two, so to triumph here again really would make him the Catalan king. Time to hand over to your commentators, James Hartigan and William Reynolds. Shuffle up and deal. It's day two of EPT Barcelona and William, always exciting to see Elki in action. My main man Elki's at the feature table here. Watching him play is like drinking a Red Bull and an espresso at the same time. It's just so exhilarating. Elki in the one seat, Noah Boken in the three seat. Who else is on our feature table? We've got Portuguese pro Nuno Coelho, Fernando Brito, a contender for EPT Player of the Year, and Danny Ryan, who made the final table of EPT Copenhagen back in season four. But as the action gets underway, we are missing Mr. Ryan. He'll join us a little later. Blinds are 600, 1200 with an ante of 100. 399 players remain from the starting field of 758. And at the end of today, we should be in the money. Elki might make that money if he picks up hands like this all day long. And look at this. Elki doesn't like his lady single. He likes his chicks and twos. He's got pocket queens. Small cards. 
Little Raising under the gun to 2,600. Yeah. It's been folded around to the big blind, the Finnish player Kimo Pusa. And he's got aces. Well, Elki's going to need three ladies if he's going to win this pot. How should Pusa play this? At this point, Elki's opened under the gun. He's saying he has a hand. Pusa should re-raise and continue to inflate the pot. He announces a re-raise, a three bet to 7,500. It's good sizing. He made it three times Elki's initial raise. And with Elki opening under the gun here and being three bet from the big blind, he's probably just going to elect to call. He does. He gets to play the flop in position. Position is powerful. And the flop has a king on it. Well, that should save Elki some money. Elki has to be cautious. We all know everybody three bets ace king, and there is a king. Pusa playing a stack of 78,000. He's going to make a continuation bet. The same size as his three bet, 7,500. Yeah, Pusa should feel as cozy as an afternoon spent by a fireplace here with these black aces. It's hard for Elki to have a seven in his hand. Elki makes the call. Eight the spades on the turn, changes nothing. Pusa's going to slow things down with an unorthodox check here. Elki checks behind. And the board's bricked off brilliantly. I think it's that time. That time for value. Do you think that's why he checked the turn? It's more likely that he gets a value bet paid off on the river? Pusa must have thought he could only get two streets here, and the best way to do that was bet the flop, slow things down on the turn, and then fire a large bet on the river. 20,000. Elki with a stack of just shy of 74,000. Do you make this call if you're in his spot? Well, a smirk is usually a muck here from Elki. This is a tough spot to fold. Pusa's disguised his hand properly well. And Elki does make the call. And Kimo Pusa shows the winning hand. Don't think that's how Elki envisaged the first hand of the day going. Nice hand. We'll see. 20k and Pusa took Elki for a ride down two streets of post-flop value town. Kimo Pusa, a relatively new player to the live circuit. Elki, tons of experience, including that EPT title. Here's another French EPT winner. Jan Bubli took down this very tournament in 2005, getting off to a great start here on day two of the tournament. Other famous faces in the field at our outer tables include the 2001 World Series of Poker main event champion, Carlos Mortensen. Also flying the flag for Team Spain, a couple of senoritas. There's Maria Macieras, sister of Juan. And Leo Margetz, who hails from Barcelona, the last woman standing in the 2009 World Series. Danny Ryan's turned up at our feature table. Now, Danny actually lived in Spain while he was a student, liked it so much that when he graduated, he came back and decided to move here permanently. You decided to show up? Yeah, I was looking at was table 15 over there, and I was like, where's my table? <laughs> On TV, mate. Nuno Coelho. Unsuited near connecting cards, not for him. And fold it around to Philippe Belli. Well, a man in a sweater vest usually means business. This time it's the garbage business, as he's opening with ace two offsuit. He's in the cutoff, one off the button. On the button with King Jack is the table chip leader, Thomas Froslev. At this stage in the tournament, the chip stacks are deep enough to flop around, and he's going to defend his button. 2,700 apiece. And here comes Kimo Pusa with his suited A7. And Elki decides to call from the big blind as well, even though he's got absolute garbage. That's what we call the net low. Well, it's top pair for Froslev, the nut flush draw for Kimo Pusa. Two players hit this flop, two players did not. Check, check. Philippe Billy was the pre-flop raiser. He does not make a continuation bet. Instead, it'll be Froslev in position who bets. And with top pair in position to the table and 12K in the middle, he's going to bet 6,700 and see what he can do to win this pot. Pusa's going nowhere, right? Pusa's got a decision. He has the nut flush draw. He's either going to just call or he may put in a raise. Pusa has 120,000. He's sitting on a lot of chips. But Froslev is the table chip leader. He may not want to inflate the pot too much. 
He elects just a call. I think we can say goodbye to Elki and Philippe Belli. Yep, they've both passed. Pusa had raised there. He would have to risk playing for his entire stack, so he takes the conservative route and just calls. The turn card is the Ten of Hearts, so that is the flush for Pusa. Froslev, of course, does have a jack-high flush draw in his hand, plus a straight draw. And just like that, Pusa turns the nizzle-dizzle, and he's going to lead for 9k. That's a bargain. How does Froslev read this? He check called the flop and now he leads out on the turn. He may be putting him on a two pair at this point. A small pot control bet. And now a paired board, a fourth heart. Both players with a flush, Pusa with the nut flush. Pusa no longer has the nuts and wow, he checks it. He must be afraid his opponent is on a boat. He takes a very conservative check there. But it's gonna work out. Froslip has the second nut flush. He's surely gonna bet this for value. Pusa's conservative play to check call, I imagine. He's not actually setting up a check raise here, right? I highly doubt he's going to check raise once the river pairs the board. However, to Pusa's delight, Froslev is actually taking himself to value town. Pusa wins another big pot and with that takes the table chip lead. I mentioned he's relatively new to the live circuit. He has had a couple of five-figure scores in the last 18 months, but this is the biggest tournament that he has played to date. This is my first EPT. I've started to enjoy more about these live tournaments because maybe two years ago I haven't really played at all at live tournaments, so this is like a new and interesting thing for me. I think that these are the ones that may, you can really make money. I never lacked confidence, but I was, I was a bit worried when I started it. But I think I have grown with confidence also. Well, I have a couple of friends who are making this basically as a living. At the moment, that's not my plan. So I'm unemployed at the moment. I'm trying to get a job now, and maybe we will see after two, three, five, ten years. We'll see how I like it in the nine to five, and then I can always come back to this. We rejoin the action at the feature table. It's Froslev versus Pusa, the rematch. An under the gun raise by Froslev, re raised by Pusa. And it looks like Froslev is going to call that three bet with his sevens. Pusa hasn't hit, but he's likely to represent that ace, William. After his three bet the man pre flop, he's going to see bet this ace high flop. Bet to win. Nearly 16,000 in the middle. And Kimo elects to bet 7,200. It's a little under half of the pot. Broslev making a call out of position. What do you make of this? Well, he's not putting his opponent on a big hand, like ace king or aces. Checks again, and it looks like Pusa's going to fire again. He's going to fire a second barrel. Yep, Pusa brought his pistol to the table. He's firing another bullet here. This is a small bet designed to trick his opponent into thinking he has a value hand. It's only 12,000. The pot's 42,000 now. He's making a bet so small it looks to be impossible that he's bluffing. He's determined to convince the Dane that he has an ace, and Froslev is finally buying it. Kimo Pusa wins another pot. He is in command of this feature table. And the two previous EPT champions just can't get a look in. Welcome back to the PokerStars.com EPT Barcelona. It's day two and the players have only one thing on their minds, making them money. 112 will be paid, 350 remain. It was a tough field, meaning many EPT favorites didn't make it to the second day, including Vienna final tableist and all-round superstar Daniel Negreanu, 
former EPT champion Arno Matern. And last year's Barcelona champion Carter Phillips couldn't defend his title. We said ciao to some of our favourite Italians. Salvatore Bonavena, Luca Pagano and Dario Minieri. All busted on day one. Top Danish pro Theo Jorgensen will not be adding an EPT title to his CV here in Barcelona as he took a bad beat when his set of kings lost to a rivered flush courtesy of Berlin champ Kevin McPhee. Time to get back out on the floor to find out what Kevin's doing with Theo's chips. Theo showed no fear with three clubs on board. He shoved the river with top set, but Kevin McPhee had outdrawn him like a champion. And things continue to go Kevin's way. He's called the all-in of Radoslav Jednak, shoving with ace-five, and Kevin has him crushed, calling him with ace-queen. But the stacks are pretty close, I have to say. He's only just got him covered, and there is a five on the flop. The pole takes the lead. So much for running like a champion. Small chance of a split part, but it doesn't come. I guess I probably have him covered a little bit. McPhee is alive, but only just. Tournaments become a shovement for him with a 12 big blind stack. Still in, I can rebuild. I love his optimism. Where there's a will, there's a way. Positive mental attitude for the man who took down EPT Berlin last season. Let's get back to our feature table. 342 players remain, blinds still 600-1200. Here is Danny Ryan with a suited Queen Jack to kick off the action. He's going to open it up from under the gun. He's raising to 2,700. It's a bold raise with that hand. Folds to the table captain. Pusa with better suited Queen. He's going to make the call. Elki. He's in this so-called hijack seat, two off the button. He's also going to come along for the ride with his jack-10 of spades. So many beautiful suited cards out there. But the blinds, Brito and Sice are not going to play. So three-way to the flop. It's two pairs for Elki, the up-and-down straight draw for Kim Opusa. Top pair with a queen kicker for Danny Ryan, who's going to get us started here, and it looks like he's going to make a continuation bet. This flop connected with everyone. There may be more fireworks than an EPT party. Pusa with the draw, counting out chips for the call. Now Elke with top two. He can't slow play this. This is a draw heavy board. There's a lot of chips in the pot and Elke's hand is extremely vulnerable on this type of a board. Not very many beautiful turn cards for him. And it looks like Elke is raising. He's counted out some yellow chips. They're worth 5,000 each. He's made it 17 and a half thousand. Ryan is faced with a decision here. He is aware it's rare for Elke to have a stone bluff, but with all the chips in the pot and the possibility Elke is drawing, it could be that magic moment. He only has 25 big blinds left. He has fewer chips than the current value of the pot. How concerned is he about Pusa? Pusa had anything a bit more legitimate. He probably would have raised the initial C bet on the flop. Danny, Danny Ryan all moves all in. Elki waiting to see what Pusa elects to do. Doesn't look like he's going to call. No, he faults. I call. Hope you have a draw. Elki makes the call. No, Elki has the made hand, and Danny Ryan is drawing to just one out because both Brito and Pusa folded queens. He's still drawing to one out, but now he's drawing to a jack to split the pot. Where's the jack? Will it come on the river? One outers do get there sometimes, 2% of the time to be precise. But this hand falls into the 98% bracket. Never play against Elki. Wise words indeed as Danny Ryan takes a walk. Sixth floor. What do you see? He's eliminated from EPT Barcelona. Good man. Thanks, Thank you, Danny. And Elki now up above the 100,000 chip mark. He could fold. Huh? He could fold. Hey. Yeah. He could fold, yeah. I'm not, I'm never gonna bluff. I'm gonna have like, yeah. at least, like, at least. It's Queen, of, Harp, it's queen yeah. of Hearts or something like that. I mean. 
I'm gonna have his Queen of Hearts or King Queen of Hearts or something. You know, like Hearts and good shot is but it's, it's, it's never gonna be like so ahead I think. Yeah, two pairs set or flush draw. He draws there also. Yeah, but if I'm um, first row, I'd have at least SI first row. Then he has like 55 or something. Yeah. So I'm never gonna have like Jack 9. It's my biggest goal these days is a second EPT title because nobody has ever done it so far, so it would be like a really great accomplishment. That's why I'm playing every EPT. Yeah, I've been chasing that title for a long time and uh, I can still test it, but it's like a long way to go still in the tournament, so I'm just gonna focus and play my best and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think I'm playing pretty well, actually. Uh, I kind of have the slump. Uh, these days I'm feeling pretty good about the way I play, and I uh, got some good reads and make some nice moves, so I'm pretty happy with it, yeah. Back at the feature table, Pusa's early position raise, re-raised by Brito. Pusa then shoved, Brito called. There's a pretty standard ace-king-queens confrontation. Brito, the player at risk. He made the final table of the EPT London main event. Since then, he secured a big lead in the EPT Player of the Year awards race. He's gonna need some help here, though. Kimo Pusa's queens still good. Brito looking for an ace or a king or running cards to make a straight. It's got to be an ace or a king, and it's got to come on the river, or he's gone from EPT Barcelona. He's had some great results in this season of the European Poker Tour, including a win in the high roller in Vienna. But this tournament will not add to that list of great results. He's gone. 336 players remain. 112 will make the money. The winner here in Barcelona will collect 825,000 euros. And Kimo Pusa, who started the day with 85,000, is now up to 195,000 in chips after just 25 hands, well above average. Let's head out to the field. Let's head to one of our outer tables as we see Ramsey Gelassi get it all in with 8-9. He has been called by Roberto Romanello, who has him crushed with ace-9. And I think it's fair to say that Ramsey needs a lot of help, William. Well, at least he's suited and connected. Well, there are two black cards on the flop. Alas, they're spades, not clubs. And now, if it's not an eight on the river, Ramsey Gelassi's eliminated. Goodbye. That was actually the second all-in confrontation between these guys. The first one ended in a chop, even though Gelassi got it in as four to one underdog. His chips go across to Roberto Romanello, the Welshman now sitting on a stack of 190,000. And that's going to make him one of the tournament chip leaders. Let's take a look at the current leaderboard. Romanello currently third in chips. Kimo Pusa, who's on our feature table, is close to 200k. But the Frenchman, Loic Sar, is the current chip leader with a stack of nearly 218,000. And we have a new player at our feature table. In seat number four, it's the Italian Massimo De Chico. He made the final table of EPT Prague back in season five, eventually got heads up against another Italian, Salvatore Bonavena, who got the better of him, but second place did get him 445,000 euros. Pocket sixes for Elke. Did you have a nice model? Blinds are up, by the way. We're now playing 800, 1600. Elke's going to raise it to 3600. And it's folded over to Belly. I hope Belly is better at balancing his checkbook than he is at balancing his preflop button calling range versus Elki. Jack nine off suit, and Kimo Pusa gonna play the queen jack off suit from the big blind. Six is still good. This is a harmless flop. Elki should be feeling pretty good about it. And he checks it. I'm surprised he didn't take this opportunity to bet to win. Gets checked around, and a nine on the turn sees Philippe Belli take the lead. Everyone played the flop passively, and now Pusa is going to use his momentum to take a stab at all of the chips out there. He does have a gut shot. 7,500. I wonder why Elke didn't bet the flop. 
Are we seeing a new side to the Frenchman? A conservative side, perhaps? No, he doesn't know the meaning of the word. And Elky's gonna look him up with his pair, and he also has a gut shot. But now over to the best hand, Belly has turned top pair. Just calls, doesn't raise, and the river is a seven. That brings the straight for Elky. And Elky got there. He's got the five to nine in his hand. Pusa didn't get there and has decided to check. With 36,000 out there, it's most likely Elky's going to throw in a value bet. How much is the real question? And the answer to that question <coughs> is 17,700. Well, starting with before the flop, Billy has made no progress finding his way out of this hand. No draws missed on this river here. In fact, they all hit. He makes the call with a nine. Send the chips to Elky. I guess his reputation precedes him. Belly must have put him on complete air. Apparently, that's all he could beat. I didn't thought you had it. I don't ever think I have it. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Nobody ever believes. So sick. Yeah, true. Not really sick, actually quite nice to have monsters and get your value bets paid off. Barcelona, a city steeped in history and tradition. And for the EPT, the city where it all began. Casino Barcelona hosted the premiere of the PokerStars.com European Poker Tour back in 2004. With 229 entrants all gunning for the first place prize of 80,000 euros and the chance to become the first ever European champion. It is all over. Stavich takes the win here in Barcelona. Tears from him there, he can't believe it. Alexander Stevich was the winner in season one. Who will be the winner in season seven? Let's get back to the action as we get ever closer to finding out. Libri's all in and in bad shape. Her ace king has run into Antonio Matias' aces. Nice <laughs> slow roll. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Lib's not happy. Why did he do that? She feels Antonio took too long to flip over those aces. It would be justified, I think, on this occasion. Queen would give her the straight. The lady needs a lady. Doesn't get there, the aces hold. And a bitter exit for Liv. Oh dear. I don't think she meant it. Why did he slow roll me? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand why that happens. Nice hand. Still don't think she means it. It's just unnecessary. It's unnecessary. Yeah, it seems unnecessary. Now, unfortunately, you've uh, gone out. Yes. But there was a little bit of controversy, wasn't there, on how you left? Yeah, you could say that. Um, I mean, the hand itself was standard. I had ace king, he had aces. We got it all in pre-flop, which is, I mean, I was fairly short. Um, so that was fine. But for some reason, I turned my hand over and he didn't want to turn his hand over. And he looked at mine and he was like, oh. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, I'm in good shape. I mean, you'd hope you would be in good shape anyway when you have Ace King. Um, and uh, he still didn't turn his hand over and we were waiting and all the TV cameras came over and he still hadn't turned it over two and a half minutes later. Um, and I was like, wow, okay, this is strange, but still, I'm happy I have Ace King. And then he turns over one, oh, an Ace, and then another Ace. And he's like, I have Aces. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Unlucky for going out, but we'll see Thank you again you. soon. Thank you. So Livbury will not be lifting her second EPT trophy here in Barcelona. 270 players remain in contention. Average chips, 84,000. Blind still 8 and 1,600. Now Boken has not been seeing a hand today. We're actually going to sweat with his fellow pro and fellow EPT champion, Elki. We're only going to see Elki's hole cards and we'll play the hand from his perspective. Okay, we're going to be in the eyes of Elki here, and his opponent is going to be Belly. Raising from the hijack makes it 4,200. And this isn't going to be the first time these two have tangoed. Elki has ace-jack. He has two options here to re-raise or just call. He chooses to call. 
Are we going to have a three-way party? No, we're not. Nuno Coelho folds the big blind. Billy raises it up from the hijack. He can have many hands here. He's in late position. It's a wide range. Elkie's ace jack has completely missed. It missed, but it could still be the best hand. He's checked to the razor. And Belly does not make a continuation bet. Well, this is a wet board. There's a lot of stuff going on there. If Belly had a real hand, I would expect him to bet to protect that real hand. At this point, I'm putting him on a checked back flush draw, 9-10, or maybe a small pair or an ace high. Goes check, check on the turn as well. Ten of hearts on the river. Elki checks for a third time, and now we get a bet from Belly. I'd be shocked if he actually had a flush or a seven here. If Elki's beat, he's going to be shown 9-10 or maybe ace-10. A worse ace high that could have rivered a pair. He bet very large. He bet the size of the pot. It is a big bet. Elki is perplexed with this bet. He makes the call. He figures his hand is good on enough occasions to make it the correct percentage play, but he was up against ace 10, and Belly did bink on the river. Ace jack. Uh, or ace queen. Let's see. Which one? Ace jack or ace queen? Moral of the story respect the random large pot bed after it's been checked to the river. Noah's sitting there thinking, ace-10, ace-jack, I'd love any ace. I'd love any playable hand right now. Let's take a look at some of the whole cards that Noah has been dealt while he's been at the TV table. Small cards. Junk. Rubbish. Rags. Noah pass. Horrible. Squeeze it. Unplayable. And Noah pass. It's, it's terrible. Noah pass. Patience, Noah. Patience. Although he can't be too patient. Noah's down to a 12 big blind stack. Got a new player arriving at the feature table. This is Marvin Rettenmeyer from Germany. Recently took down the grand final of the Spanish Poker Tour for 111,000 euros. Blind still 800 and 1600 with a 200 ante. Massimoto Chico, the under the gun here. Italian has folded. And Sice has also passed. Our new player, Rettenmeyer. Five off. He's going to fold his first hand at the table. That's one of my favorite times to raise. New to the table, why not throw in a raise? Action passed around to the player in the cutoff. It is Kimo Pusa. The Finn has Queen 10, and he is raising. Well, everything's gone his way thus far. No reason to stop now. Suited connectors for Elki on the button. Don't think he's going to get through Elki. Elki's either going to call or re raise. If I had to guess, I'm thinking Elkie's going to isolate. Pondering the amount. There is the re-raise. It's a three bet to 11,200. Hang on a second. Nuno Coelho has a decision in the small blind. <laughs> he has ace-queen and a stack of about 33,000, just over 20 big blinds. Now, Coelho is well aware the table chip leader could be opening a wide range. And Elki could have an extremely wide range three betting the button. One thing Nuno has to consider here, though, is if he moves all in, he has no fold equity. Because Elki's priced in to call with any two. Yes, that is going to go through his mind. But with 20,000 chips in the pot and only having 33,000 in his own stack, this is a great spot to more than double up. Well, he has moved all in. Kimo Pusa quickly gets out of the way, and Elki will have to make a reluctant call here. Yep, he's going to get the price. 22 2 more. And it's only a small dent in his stack of 115,000. That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> I know that is your range there. Yeah. Elki relatively happy to see that he does have two live cards. And he hits both of them on the flop. Two pairs, but there is the gut shot straight draw for Nuno Coelho. 
and he picks up more outs. Now there's a jack on the turn. Any ace, any queen for a better two pairs, any ten for the straight. No, it's a four. Nuno Coelho is KO'd by Elke. Good luck. Good luck. Put, I can take it right out of this head now. Damn, now everybody knows that. Now everybody's gonna know I don't have the nuts when I actually bet. I don't have to have the nuts. I think everyone knew that already. Yes, this is not breaking news, Elke. Another new player at our feature table. It's Georgios Zizimopoulos. Comes to the table with nearly 47,000 in chips. His previous results include an 18th place finish in a side event at EPT Berlin. Well, here's how our feature table stacks up right now. The average in the tournament is 90K, and we've got two huge stacks, Kimo Pusa and Elki. Marvin Rattenmeyer is below average right now with about 63,000. He's first to speak on this hand. Didn't play as king five, he's not going to play as king three. Folded around to Elki. And he's not going to ride the wave. Georgius not going to play his first hand at the table. Noah short stacked on the button. I don't know why I even bothered looking. He is all in oh, and a quick, <laughs> quick reshove by Massimo De Chico with the jacks. Oh. And Alan Sice calls with the queens. At least I can tell you if I hit that. A three-way all-in. My dad will be two against two, and it's good yeah, for you. It's good for you. And looking great for the Englishman. It's called waking up with a hand. Right? Could knock out two players here if those queens hold. And the clock counts. King, 10, 7. And it's looking good for him. Can I get a six? De Chico, now Boken, on the verge of elimination. Oh, there's a flash of hope for Noah. Still behind. He needs a five or a four. Massimo De Chico needs a jack. Alan Sice wants those queens to hold. And they do. Noah Boken, eliminated. Massimo De Chico, eliminated. Lots of chips for the Englishman. Two gone in one hand. Nice hand. Pretty good timing to have it. Well, I was looking at my fault, I'm going to push anyway. I didn't think it suited him, of course. And Elki must be thinking to himself, after Noah folded all day, how did he get all in with two cards that don't even add up to double digits? Well, Noah isn't the only EPT champion we've lost as we take you across the floor of the Casino Barcelona. We said goodbye to Liv Berea a short while ago. We've now lost the man who took down EPT Berlin last season, Kevin McPhee. The winner of EPT Tallinn this season, Kevin Stani, has been eliminated. And EPT regular Johnny Lodden is also headed to the rail. It's eliminations are plenty here in Barcelona. The remaining field all fighting for a share of the whopping 3.8 million prize pool. If you're already a registered PokerStars.com player, you're all set. But if not, grab your laptop and download the free software from www.pokerstars.com and start qualifying for the European Poker Tour. You could win a seat to the very next EPT event from the comfort of your very own home. Good luck. in the air at the feature table where the Finn Kimo Pusa has the chip lead. Froslev started the day as one of the big stacks. It's been pretty quiet since losing a big pot to Pusa. Elke's been running quite well. Not going to get involved here. Georgios announces raise. He's got ace three suited. It's a late position raise. Alan Sice has had enough. He's out of here. We may never see him again. Philippe Belly has 10-6 off suit, but 
he wants to defend his big blind. Rubbish hand, and he's out of position. I'm not sure what he's getting into here. He must think he can outplay his opponent post-flop. Five, five, eight. Well, there's 10,000 chips in the pot, and this is a very dry board. Not much is going on. Well, he's representing something because he leads out into the Razor. And he only leads 3,100. This is smaller than the pre-flop raise. The problem with this lead is it's small and hard to represent any concrete made hand. If he had a five, he would probably check it to his opponent and let him do the betting. And now he's just bet 3,100. Taking a stab at it. Georgios has nothing but ace high, but he will call. See a turn card. One stab is not going to be enough. He's going to have to have heart and commitment with this bluff. But he checks the turn. Is he giving up? It appears to be so. King of diamonds on the river. He hasn't given up. Well, he's convinced he can win this pot. And he's convinced 5,600 will do the job. That's about a third of the pot. The problem with this bet is it's just too small. He's giving his opponent four to one to make the call, which means he only has to be right one in five times. And with Ace High, he may well look him up. He may also just want to know exactly what Belly was playing here and get information. Exactly, it's a cheap spot to be a hero with Ace High. He makes the call. Good call. Ten High. Well, at least he said it loudly and proudly. A thief always sees another thief from afar. You really don't believe me, eh? You weren't afraid of anything. With an ASI 3? Well, he did believe you. He believed you were bluffing. Next time before you bluff, Google a clue, and it's going to tell you to fold preflop. Look at this. Silent Sice is back, and we have another new player at our feature table. It's Rui Milhamens. He's made an EPT final table. He finished sixth in the main event of EPT London in 2009. He's got a stack of 33,000, and as he gets settled, let's take you to one of our outer tables where the short-stacked Greek, Paris Kokoliaris, is all in with ace-5. He's run into the jacks of Maxim Likov. Bit of hope for him on the flop. He's got the nut flush draw. Oh, the board is paired on the turn, and he's drawing dead. He's eliminated. His chips go to the Russian, who now has 51,000. Now I have chips. <laughs> looking to do the double, looking to win his second EPT title, as is Jan Budli, the winner of Barcelona in season two. He's got around 180,000 right now, but in the top 10, we have local hero Luis Rufas. He's had a big stack all day. Also very healthy in chips at the moment is the Swedish player Christopher Thorsen. He's just broken through the 200,000 chip mark. And back at the feature table, things have slowed down a bit for Elki, but he's still looking healthy with more than 150,000. He doesn't have the table chip lead, though. That honor belongs to Kimo Pusa, who has 192,000. Let's take a look at all 52 hands he's been dealt today, and more specifically, at the 19 hands that he's actually played. They include those aces against Elki early on. He's also played a lot of middling aces and a lot of high connecting cards. And if we look at his win-loss ratio, he's 111, lost eight. Those paint cards haven't necessarily been working out for him today. A7, on the other hand, he's 3-1. and one. Although the amount of hands he has played is well above average, a lot of that can be attributed to many playable hands in late position or multi-way pots from the blinds. How much? So we have just used a relatively small sample size to shatter the myth that all Nordic players are uber laggy. Yeah, that uh, that yesterday uh, after the dinner break. Ace Jack for Rettenmeyer. And now he has an opportunity to increase his stack. Pondering the amount he's going to open to. Blind still 8 and 16. And he decides a raise to 3,300 is optimal. Just over the minimum, folded over to Frozlev, who oddly enough has pocket threes. 
He's made the call. Kimo Pusa in the small blind is thinking, hmm, getting a decent price here. And as William pointed out, he likes to play from the blinds in a multi-way pot. This could be a great spot for Elki to squeeze. Everyone just looks weak. Elki decides not to squeeze. He's going to make it a foursome. We're going to see a flop. Everybody's cards live and different. Frost left with the only pair. The flop is queen high. That's good for Elki. Pusa has the flush draw. Well, the two players who connected the most with this flop have checked. Rottenmeyer decides not to make a continuation bet into three opponents, and Froslev checks the button. We see the turn card for free. Boom, there is the flush for Pusa, albeit a low flush. Yep, Pusa's been a champion at turning the heart flush today. Let's see how he plays it. With 15,000 in the pot and the fact his flush is only four high, he should be betting, and it's 10,000 to go. Strong, almost pot-sized bet from Pusa. Elki passes, top pair, no kicker. Elki makes a disciplined lay down there. Pusa's only shown down excellent hands all day. And Reitenmeyer isn't debating to call, he's debating if he can raise and maybe get Pusa off some type of pair. He thinks better of it, as does Froslev. Pusa wins another pot. And the rich get richer. He's been the table captain all day. No reason to stop now. It's the 20th hand he's played today. He improves to a 12 and 8 record. So Kimo Pusa is currently second in chips, just behind his Nordic neighbor, Christopher Thorson. Other notable names in the top 10 right now, Bryn Kenny, Roberto Romanello, and the guy all the locals are rooting for, Luis Rufas. Next time on the EPT. Hey, baby. Day two continues as players strive to reach the first hurdle, making them money. And two very different characters strike up a friendship at the feature table. What's your name, sorry? Gaston. Roberto. It's too good, you're too good. You see how good he is? I show you one. Choose one. He always shows me, though. He's a nice man.